We're going to be picking the Cleveland Browns, and I know with all the expectations going up against the Tennessee Titans, that seems like a trap game already in week one, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to do that to the Browns. We're going to give them the win there, give them the win over the Jets. The Rams game is going to be very difficult, but you know what? They got them at home. I'm going to give them a win there, too. So you look at these three games. They got the Ravens on the road. That seems like a trap game, but you know what? They didn't get the job done last year in the playoff or leading up to the playoffs. I think that they will get them here 4-0. You think, like, the Browns are for real. The Browns are legit. They got the 49ers. That's not a good team. Well, guess what? That's where they get a loss. We'll give them a loss there, which is unfortunate. But then the Seahawks, one of the best teams in the NFL. You go into the break 4-2, and two, you're still feeling good. You got a huge game against New England. You know what? They're not going to allow that. So now you're sweating it. It's 4-3, and three, but you know what? You got the Broncos, Dub, Bills, Dub, and now it comes the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, I'm going to give them a dub there. Oh, we'll give you a win there. And now you got the Steelers on the road. Things are starting to get crazy. Things are starting to get real. You know what, they're gonna take a loss there, but they play host to Cincinnati. Win, feeling good, nine and four, everything's rolling. You're in Arizona, Arizona's not playing well. Guess what, you're gonna take a loss there. Unfortunately, you're gonna do that, but you know what, nine and five, a chance to clinch a playoff spot. There it is, win over the Baltimore Ravens. And since you've got nothing to play for, and Cincinnati will do something like winning to ruin their playoff or their draft chances, boom, take a loss right there, 10 and six, for the Cleveland Browns. I think that's a pretty good record for them. I'm buying into the hype. I think this is a very reasonable expectation for the Browns. I think with Baker Mayfield, OBJ, Jarvis Landry, all that stuff's gonna work. One of the hidden features, I think, of this Browns team that people are overlooking, Todd Monken. What he did down in Tampa Bay, he's gonna be able to do in Cleveland. Getting the ball to everybody. Look at the pass distribution last year in Tampa Bay. They bring that to Cleveland. Call me a believer, I say the Browns go 10 and six and make the playoffs. The Cincinnati Bengals for the first time in what seems like my lifetime, they have a new head coach, Zach Taylor comes over. He was the quarterback's coach for the Los Angeles Rams. Will he have the same success that Sean McVay had in Los Angeles? Let's check it out here. Tough schedule for the Cincinnati Bengals. You're opening up at Seattle. I'm sorry. I, I motioned towards a win, but there's no way that can happen. Seattle, one of the best teams in the league. You play host to San Francisco, a team that struggled last year with Jimmy Garoppolo injured. I'm sorry. You're going to take a loss. You're at Buffalo. Buffalo could be one of the surprise teams of the season. I like them early in the year, so I'm going to say that's where you take a loss there. You got the dreaded Pittsburgh Steelers on the road as well. That's going to be a loss. Arizona, that seems like a winnable game. They got a brand new head coach in Cliff Kingsbury. They got Kyler Murray. You know what? I'm still going out there. I'm so sorry. I don't mean that. Don't take this personally. At the Baltimore Ravens, I'm sorry. Jacksonville, you know, I'm down with Duval. I'm sorry. I know this is getting bad. At lot, okay. Revenge game, sort of for Zach Taylor, but I don't know that that's exactly going to happen. I'm going to have you taking another loss. It's 0-8. I know it's not looking great right now, but you got the Ravens at home. There's an opportunity. No. Raiders? No, I'm sorry. The Raiders are a pretty good team. A lot of people are sleeping on them. The Steelers. Upsetting the Steelers at home. You can do it. You can make it. You know what? Actually, that's not going to happen. But, but, no, no, no. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Win over the Jets, huh? You break the skid, you're 1-11, at you go to Cleveland. I'm sorry, you're gonna lose. Uh, New England, yeah, okay, let's, don't need to. But, but, no, no, this is it. So now you're thinking like, cool, you know what? We're gonna get Tua, we're gonna be 1-15, in now, it's the Bengals. Remember, it's the Bengals. Of course, a meaningless game against the Browns, they would end up winning that one. They don't get the quarterback that they need or anything like that, so I'm very sorry for anybody in Cincinnati. I was a huge fan of Eric Davis back in the day. I hope you won't hold it against me. Let's move on to the Baltimore Ravens. Last season, Lamar Jackson probably saved John Harbaugh's job as he got the Ravens into the playoffs. What does he have in store for his second year? Well, let's take a look at the schedule. Let's start off real easy. You're going to beat the Dolphins. You're going to beat the Arizona Cardinals, the game you're really worried about, the Kansas City Chiefs. The only time that Lamar Jackson lost in the regular season, and really then it was a fourth down, no look, Patrick Mahomes working some magic. Like, you've got these guys running. Actually, you don't. Kansas City's improved on defense. I think they will give you a little bit of trouble, especially in Arrowhead Stadium. But you got the Browns at home. You know what? Yeah, you're reeling now. It's OK. You can regroup, you can overcome, you can improvise. You know, actually, I'm sorry. So now you're two and three. You lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers at Pittsburgh. That just seems what's going to happen. 
But you know what? You got Cincinnati. Now you're back. You're three and three. You got to go across the country to play the Seattle Seahawks. That's not going to work out for you. That's going to be an L. But you know what? You take a bye. This is okay. You look at the New England Patriots. Now in a vacuum, you would think, I kind of favor the New England Patriots. But they just knocked off the Cleveland Browns. They're riding high a little bit. You get them at home. I say you take down the New England Patriots. So now you're feeling pretty good. You're four and four. You beat the Cincinnati Bengals. You're five and four. All right, things are starting to go. You're feeling good about yourself. Here come Deshaun Watson. Huh? And the Texans. Uh, you'll beat them too. All right, now you guys are six and four. You're traveling across the country to play the Los Angeles Rams, the team that, of course, represented the NFC in the Super Bowl last year. You know what? It is so tough to make those cross country trips. I'm going to give you an L there, but you play host of the San Francisco 49ers the following week. We'll take a W there. We'll take a W over the Bills. And then you got the Jets. That feels like a win there as well. So now you're nine and five. You're feeling pretty good. One more win gets you into the playoffs. This is the Baltimore Ravens though. How do you think this movie plays out? We've seen this before. Of course you're gonna lose to the Browns. Now you gotta beat the Pittsburgh Steelers at home to get into the playoffs. Obviously, L. What am I saying? Nine and seven for the Baltimore Ravens. Don't make the playoffs, but I think Lamar Jackson makes some strides this season. Ultimately, good things are gonna be happening, just maybe not this year. The Pittsburgh Steelers. A lot more drama than whatever you would see on the CW. But you know what? What does it mean for this season? Let's take a look at the schedule. Coming into week one, you have to go to, like this is what they give you in week one. After everything you went through, you got to go play the New England Patriots. I'm sorry. That's going to be a loss, but you get to play host of the Seattle Seahawks the following week. Congratulations, you're starting 0-2. Seattle is one of the best teams in the NFL. I'm sorry, don't get mad at me. That's a good team, but you know what? We got wins over the 49ers, wins over the Bengals. Now you play your hated rivals, the Baltimore Ravens. Boom, you're 3-2. and two. Things are looking pretty good, but you got to travel across the country to play the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm gonna say that that is an L, but it's okay. You're three and three. Everything is gonna be fine. But you know what? The good news is you got a bye week and you got the Miami Dolphins. So actually you got two bye week. No, that's mean. But you gotta win. You're back to four and three. But now comes the toughest part of your schedule. The Indianapolis Colts are one of the top teams in the NFL. I thought that Paris Campbell was a nice addition to that offensive team. So you lose to the Indianapolis Colts. You play host to the LA Rams, you think an LA team? The LA team's not gonna come to Pittsburgh. Oh wait, actually the Chargers did that last year. So I'm gonna give you an L, but you got the Browns. You can't lose to the, oh wait, yeah, you're gonna lose to the Browns again. But this is the one, one great thing about the AFC North. The Bengals are always around the corner. So now you're five and six, struggling to get into the playoff race. You beat the Cleveland Browns, you're six and six. Everything seems perfect now. You're like, how can things go wrong? We got, we got to go to Arizona. This is going to be, oh no, it's not going to be a cakewalk. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. That's a pretty good team down there. You got to be very careful of them. But you know what? You get a win here against the Buffalo Bills, who I think is going to be pretty good. But the New York Jets, now you're eight and seven. Things are cooking. You're out of the playoffs, though. That's the unfortunate thing right here at eight and seven. But you know what? You have something to play for. You can knock the Baltimore Ravens out of the playoffs. So what do you think would happen? Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Baltimore with a chance to knock the Ravens out of the playoffs. That's exactly what they do. They win, you go nine and seven. You finish with a better record than the Oakland Raiders, so at least you have that. But unfortunately, no playoffs for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Kansas City Chiefs came so close to going to the Super Bowl last year in Patrick Mahomes' first season as a starting NFL quarterback. What is in store for this year? Well, let's take a look. First week, you gotta go down and face my friends down in Duval County, Florida. That should be a win, no. You know what, everybody's gonna be sleeping on my friends down there, but Jacksonville is gonna be back this season. They catch the Kansas City Chiefs off guard, but that's okay. The Chiefs won't reel for too long. We'll give them wins over the Oakland Raiders on the road, back-to-back -back road games to open the season, but playing host to the Baltimore Ravens, you get a win there. You get the Lions on the road in week four. There's a lot of travel early in the season, but you know what? You start off three and one, you gotta feel pretty good about that. Now you got the Indianapolis Colts at home. 
Bringing them to Arrowhead Stadium will give them a good opportunity to go ahead and get the 4-1, which a lot of people, I think when you look at the first five weeks of the season, you feel 4 and ones pretty reasonable. Then a win over the Texans. Then a win over the Denver Broncos. Then you got the Green Bay Packers. You know what? I'll give you a win over the Packers as well. Win over the Vikings. Then you got the Tennessee Titans. Now you're rolling. Now we're talking, right? This is exactly what you thought the Chiefs were going to be doing. Steamrolling through the NFL. 9-1. and one. Andy Reid always has his teams prepared and ready to go early in the season. But you know what? You're going to take a tough loss in Los Angeles, but you're going to back it up. You're going to get a win over the Raiders. You got to go to New England. Last year, you lost to the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship. Revenge is on your mind, but you know what? Bill Belichick on the other sideline there. That's going to be an L. So you're 10-3. and three. You're feeling pretty good. You got the Denver Broncos. Then you got to go to Chicago in week six. I'm sorry, Matt Nagy, former offensive coordinator of Andy Reid. You think this team is going to go face the monsters of the midway in week 16 and get a W? You are mistaken. That is an L. But you know what? To finish out the season, to go 12-4. I got you with the win over the LA Chargers to go 12 and four. So don't worry, you're there in the playoffs. You're looking pretty good. So I think the Kansas City Chiefs are gonna live up to those expectations. Maybe not as great of a record that a lot of people are expecting. I know Chiefs fans will be upset that I didn't pick them to go 15 and one or 16 and 0, but 12 and four is a reasonable expectation for this team. The greatness of the Raiders is not in its past, but in its future. That is something that Al Davis used to say, and it's never been more true than it is right now. A lot of expectations coming in with the Raiders. John Gruden in his second season. They open up with the Denver Broncos. Oh, I'll give you guys the win. 1-0, you're feeling pretty good, but you got the Chiefs. I'm sorry, you're probably gonna lose that one. The Minnesota Vikings. All right, you're at Minnesota. That's, that's reasonable. Minnesota, I mean, like, it's still Minnesota, but you might end up losing that one. And you got the Colts, too. Actually, this is a very tough start of the season. If you look at who the Raiders have to play now, you got the Broncos, which is basically a bye week. You got the Chiefs, you got the Vikings, you got the Colts, you got the Bears. And let me tell you something about the Bears. This is, I, in me knowing the Bears the way I do, I really do believe the, the Raiders could, could take this, but I can't hit the dub. Excuse me, sir, do you mind? Can you hit that dub, please, for the Raiders? Oh, yeah, thank you so much. You know what? It gives me no pleasure to do that as a Bears fan. It hurts me as a, but I believe, I believe that you're going to end up upsetting the Bears. That, it just, this is the way the NFL works. You're going to end up getting that W over the Bears and feeling pretty good. Coming back after beating the Bears over there in the UK, but you know what? You're going to lose to the Packers. You're going to lose here. You got a game against the Lions. It's so tough, but you know what? You'll probably get that win over the Lions. Feeling pretty good. The Los Angeles Chargers at home. You know what? You're now getting on equal footing with both the Chiefs and the Chargers. You're behind a little bit. Let's be honest. The Chargers and the Chiefs are two of the more complete teams in the NFL, but the Raiders are getting there and I think they have enough to at least upset one of them. You got to win over the, oh my gosh, you got to win over the Bengals as well. Let's give you a win over the Jets. Now you got the Chiefs and, uh, Chiefs and Arrow. Okay, Chiefs and Arrowhead, that's a tough game. That's, that's not an easy one, but you got those Tennessee Titans. You're gonna lose to Jacksonville. Again, I, I think very highly of Jacksonville this season. You're gonna lose down in Los Angeles, even though it'll seem like a little bit of a home game because the LA Raider fan base is still here, but you're gonna lose to the Los Angeles Chargers, but you're gonna go on the road and you're gonna beat the Denver Broncos. You're gonna finish eight and eight. And I know that's not kind of what you expected. I know you have playoff hopes and dreams and everything like that. But I think that the keys for this Raiders season, if you can go eight and eight, get some signature wins, and prove that Derek Carr is your quarterback of the future, then I would consider that a successful season for the Oakland Raiders. The Los Angeles Chargers are one of the most complete teams in the NFL. How will that affect their schedule? Let's take a look. They open with the Indianapolis Colts at home. I like the Colts so much this year. It just seems so Charger, I don't know, it'll be a missed kick or something crazy will happen. It always seems the Chargers can't get it going in week on week one, excuse me, but they do eventually find their groove. So look at wins over the Lions. Look at wins over the Texans. They're gonna beat the Dolphins. Yeah, oh yeah, they're rolling now. They're gonna beat the, the, the Broncos. The Steelers is a tough one. Last year they went 
to Pittsburgh. We came with the first team in history to fall behind by 14 points in the second half and then still rally to beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh. It's never happened before. So now you're like five and one. This team is looking pretty good. They're going to the Titans. Oh, this is a laugher. No. This is a, a quintessential Chargers loss right there to be five and two. Then they got another road game that's very tough against the Chicago Bears. And listen, I try to be as realistic about my team. This seems like it would be. Yeah, you're right, sir. Yeah. It's going to be a win for the Chargers. I don't listen. It gives me no pleasure to sit here and give the Chargers a win over the Chicago Bears, but they match up pretty well against them. I think they will find a way to get it done. Again, the Bears find these inexplicable losses, especially at home. And really, the wisdom of the janitor says that the Chargers beat the Bears. You got to go with it. I can't argue with it. But you know what? I'm not going to argue with this either. I'm going to have you guys knocking out the Packers. So this makes it a little bit more palatable. You beat the Bears. As long as, as long as you beat the Packers, then I can be cool with that. So now you have two huge wins. You're going to Oakland. That's it. That's a Chargers loss right there. I'm sorry. You know it. I know it. You're going to lose to the Raiders in that one. But that just means there's a huge game coming up with Kansas City. Perhaps you were looking ahead a little bit. That's only natural. You're human beings. But you get that win over the Kansas City Chiefs. Go to 8-3 and three, heading into the break. Then you get the Broncos. You get a win there. You're going down to face my friends down in Duval County, Florida. You know what? I got to go with the all elite Jacksonville Jaguars who signed Nick Foles this season. The biggest signing for the Khan family since they signed Chris Jericho to AEW. But then you got the Vikings. You'll get them. You got the Raiders again. You're not going to lose twice to the Raiders. Let's be realistic. So now you're 11 and 4. You're going up, going to Arrowhead Stadium facing the Kansas City Chiefs. Last season, you rallied for a huge deficit, just like you did in Pittsburgh, and you took down the Chiefs. You don't care about that weather. You're not a soft LA team. You can make it happen on the road in Arrowhead in front of those fans. You know what, I'm sorry. You're taking a loss here. But you know what? 11 and five, you're still in the tournament. And you know what? I think you're gonna make a long run in the playoffs. But you know what? 11 and five, back in the playoffs. I think that's a pretty good season for the LA Chargers. In a league where the coaches are getting younger and the quarterbacks are getting more mobile, the Broncos went out and hired a 60-year-old coach. They brought in the least mobile quarterback in NFL history. Like, they brought in a guy who makes Drew Bledsoe look like Randall Cunningham in his prime. So what does that mean for the record? I think there's a lot of talent in Denver. I just don't think it's going to reflect in the standings because there's a lot of tough matchups here. Going to Oakland, I think the Raiders are much improved this season. You're not gonna beat the Bears. You're not gonna beat the Packers. You're not gonna beat the Jags. You're not gonna beat the Chargers. You know what? You're gonna beat the Titans. I don't think that's too outlandish. You're not gonna beat the Chiefs. You're not gonna beat the Colts. You're not gonna beat the Browns. You're not gonna beat the Vikings. I mean, it's the Vikings, but still like, even they're okay. The Bills are a pretty good team. The Chargers are better than you. You got the Texans. Where do we think? What do we think of the Texans? You know what? I think the Texans get you. The Chiefs are going to get you. The Lions? I'll give you a win of the Lions. Congratulations. You're 2 and 14. You get the first pick in the draft. At some point, Drew Locke is going to play. You're going to at least see if he is your quarterback of the future. Otherwise, you can use that first overall selection to draft a quarterback. Sorry to be the one to have to bring this bad news to you, Broncos fans. It's just the way the schedule worked out. The New England Patriots, the defending Super Bowl champions. Can they do it again? Let's take a look at the schedule. They open up in week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Patriots are the, the model of consistency. Nothing seems to bother them. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, everything seems to bother them. They look, they're, they're as dysfunctional as the cast of Riverdale. But, oh my gosh, what did I do? No, a win, I surprised everybody. No, 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 no. Don't worry, the Patriots will beat them. I know, I gave you a start. I know the Patriots fans were already typing the Cubs. How did this guy have us losing to the Steelers? You don't. I got you beating the Steelers. Don't worry about it. You know what, though? You know you go down to Miami and lose every year. It happens. You guys, for whatever reason, you don't play well in Miami. It's the opening quarter of the season. Bill Belichick always drops a game he probably shouldn't. You're through this all. You're Super Bowl champions. You're, you guys are fine. You beat the Jets. You beat the Bills. You beat Washington. You beat the Giants. Do you guys still hate them for the two times they beat you in the Super Bowl? I don't know if you would or not, but anyways, you beat them. You're going to beat 
the Jets as well. Now you got the Cleveland Browns. This is going to be a tough matchup. The Cleveland Browns, they have all the emotion, all the expectations. This is their chance to go out there and make a statement, to let the world know that they are ready to compete for a Super Bowl. You know what? You beat them. So now you're seven and one, and you're feeling pretty good. This is Patriots football. This is what you're used to. You know what, though? You got to go to Baltimore, coming off a huge win. I know it's weird to say huge win over the Cleveland Browns. You take a loss there, you go into your bye week, you come back, you play the Philadelphia Eagles, the team that knocked you off in the Super Bowl just two years ago. They give you another L. Now you're seven and three. What's happening now? Here's where all the all the sports writers come up. What's wrong with the Patriots? Is Tom Brady too old? Can this team make it? Are they done? Is this the end of the dynasty? Does Gronk need to come back? What's going to happen? Yeah, you go out. Here's what's going to happen. You beat the Cowboys. You beat the Texans. You got the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, we're not going to let you beat us. You think they're going to go to Cincinnati? On to Cincinnati to get another W. Buffalo, win. Miami, you don't win in New England. You win in South Beach. Boom. Oh, look what happened. Now all of a sudden, they're 13-3. What happened? They're the number one seed in the AFC, just like they typically are. This is what the New England Patriots do. There's a couple of hiccups here and there. You give some teams some hope. You let the Ravens think that perhaps they're going to be a playoff team, but ultimately you come out, you squash all their hopes and dreams, you finish with the top seed in the AFC, and you are ready to march to the Super Bowl. You might have heard this, but Josh Allen has a cannon. Actually, he's right-handed, but whatever. What is that going to mean for the Buffalo Bills record this season? Well, let's take a look. I'll start you guys off with the win over the Jets. I'll start you guys off with the win over the New York Giants. I will even give you a win over the Cincinnati Bengals. You are 3-0. and You're flying high. You're in first place in the AFC East. You're playing host to the New England Patriots. This is your chance once and for all. The Sean McDermott era is starting with the game again. You know, actually, no, they're gonna they're gonna beat you. But I will have you next week. You know what? You're gonna end up losing to the Titans as well. Probably. Let's see. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you're gonna go three and two heading into the bye week. But you know what? You return. You get that win over the Miami Dolphins after the bye week. You're four and two. You're feeling pretty good. Oh, here come the Philadelphia Eagles, one of the best teams in the NFL. You're four and three, but it's not, it's not too bad because here comes Washington. You get a win there, but then you got to go to Cleveland, and Cleveland, of course, has got all the hype. They're still rolling. They're going to give you an L, and then you got the Dolphins. You know what? I'll have you sweep the Dolphins. That's how magnanimous I am. You get a win over the Denver Broncos, but you lose to the Cowboys, and then you lose to the Ravens, then you lose to the Steelers, then you lose to New England. At some point, you're like, wait a minute. Were we, were we making a run to the playoffs? No, this stretch right here is what's going to ultimately do you win. But you know what? You show some pride there in the final game of the season. You find a way to get over on Adam Gase and the New York Jets, and you finish a respectable 8-8, eight and eight, and that's nothing to sneeze at, Buffalo. I say playoffs for you next year, but this season, not bad. The New York Jets have a brand new head coach, Adam Gase, because I, apparently the Jets were watching all those games that he was coaching in Miami, and they're like, we got to get this guy. What is it going to mean for their schedule? What is it going to mean for their record? Let's take a look right now. And I say this as somebody who is a huge Sam Darnold fan. I remember watching him at San Clemente High School. Not that it's going to matter right here, because you're going to take an L to the Bills. You're going to take an L to the Cleveland Browns. This is a tough schedule right off the top. L to the... So the last two Super Bowl champions, you got to play. You got to play back to back. That's four L's. That's not a way you're going to want to start. Now the New York media is salivating. They're making fun of. They're making fun of Adam Gase and everything's going wrong. What could happen? Oh, here come the Cowboys. Perfect. There's another loss. Well, don't worry. Things will get a little bit easier because you got to play. Oh wait, the Super Bowl champions. Yes, yeah, so you got them. Oh, and six. It's not the end of the world. You got it. Oh, God. No, you're not going to go down to Duval County and win that game. But the following week. Because I'm feeling, you know, pretty, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. You know what? I'm going to give you the L. I'm sorry. You're not going to go to Florida in back-to-back -back weeks. I know a lot of New Yorkers retire to Florida. Your season's going to retire in Florida. But you come back with back-to-back -back wins over the Jets. Or not the Jets. The Giants and the Redskins. But you're going to lose here. You're actually going to lose to the Cincinnati Bengals. But I, you know what? You'll beat the Dolphins. You got something going on. You got a home win. So your fans can go out and be like, hey, we got a home win. And you'll lose to the Raven. This is a tough schedule. I'll even have you close it out with a loss. I do believe there is talent on this team. I believe there's talent to finish better 
than three and 13, but when you look at the tough start of the season, and that stretch where you go New England, Philadelphia, Dallas, New England, and Jacksonville, and you close out with the Ravens, the Steelers, and the Bills, three and 13 seems like a pretty accurate prediction for this team, even though I love Sam Darnold. I'll try to make it up to you. Go Tritons. Three and 13 is the best I can do. Brian Flores is the new head coach in Miami, and I think there's a lot to be excited for, but this season, how is that gonna impact the record? Let's take a look. Tough start right here, right off the top. Baltimore Ravens, I see that as a loss, but the good news is you get to play host to the New England Patriots, a team that you traditionally beat in South Beach, and of course, the revenge game for Brian Flores and his staff. So now you're feeling pretty good, you're one and one, but unfortunately you got the Cowboys, that's a loss. The Chargers, that's a loss. You got the Redskins, there's a win, you're two and three. Okay, this could go, maybe there's something working here, but unfortunately the Bills are a lot better than people are giving them credit for. You got the Pittsburgh Steelers, that is gonna be a loss. You got the Jets, there's a win, you're three and five. You think like, okay, perhaps we can turn this around a little bit, but then in week 10, you gotta go to Indianapolis. That's a loss. The wheels are starting to fall off as you lose at home to Buffalo. The Browns get you. The Eagles get you. The Jets. Yeah, you got to go on the road to face the Jets. That's just not going to work out for you. Back-to-back -back weeks in New York. The Giants get you the following week. The Bengals starting to play well. And, of course, the New England Patriots trying to lock up that number one seed in the AFC. We'll end up handing you another loss as you close out a tough stretch. But you know what? First year head coach, all you got to do is make some small progress. The talent level will start to build a little bit. You'll be there at the top of the draft. Perhaps you can get your quarterback of the future then. But unfortunately, we'll see what happens with Josh Rosen. Is he the quarterback of the future? Well, they will certainly find out with the record of 3-13. and Frank Reich has the Indianapolis Colts rolling especially heading into 2019. What a stroke of luck that they didn't hire that one guy, the, the dude, the, the offensive coordinator for the Patriots. What? Josh McDaniels, that's the guy. God, it's kind of like when you invite somebody to a party who you really don't want to invite, but you feel like, well, he's friends with this guy and I gotta, I gotta ask him. And then at the last minute, he's like, yeah, bro, can't make it. You're like, sweet, because now this team's a lot more fun. Let's see what it means for their record this season. Because I think the Colts start off with a bang. Boom, they're gonna go to Los Angeles. They're gonna beat the Chargers. The Chargers always seem to struggle in week one. And I think this Colts team is gonna be geared up and ready to go right from the get-go. They're gonna get wins over Tennessee. They're gonna beat the Falcons. I know a lot of people like the Falcons this season, but I'm really excited for what the Colts are gonna do. Starting 4-0 in the first quarter of the season. Then you gotta go to Kansas City. This is gonna be a tough game. This is gonna be the one that everybody wants to see in week five. I'm sorry, guys, you're going to take a loss there, but no worries. You're four and one. Things are looking pretty good. You're going to get a win over the Texans. You're going to beat the Denver Broncos. Now, going to Pittsburgh is going to be pretty tough, but we've seen over the last couple of years, some of these teams have started to go into Pittsburgh and get some big victories. I'm thinking of the Chargers last year. Indianapolis is going to do the same this season. They're going to, so they're going to go seven and one. They're going to be eight and one, and then they're gonna play host to Jacksonville, and I think Jacksonville is gonna be back this season, playing in an elite level, but the Colts will get them there, but you know what, you can't keep beating the Titans or Kenya. What are we doing? Or they're, the, they're also the Texans. A lot of people, they look the same. I'm sorry that these logos look the same. It's the Texans. They'll lose to them. They'll beat the Titans. Guys, mix up your uniforms. Change your colors, do something else. You'll beat the the Bronx, he'll beat the box. They don't even look alike. But anyways, a loss to the New Orleans Saints, one of the top teams in the NFC, but a win over the Carolina Panthers. That is going to be a tougher game than a lot of people will be thinking of. But you're not going down to my friends in Duval County and coming out of there with a victory. But 12-4, and four, number one in the AFC South. It is going to be a huge year for the Indianapolis Colts. I'm excited with what they're doing offensively. Last year, defensively, they got a lot, of, a lot of nice players in the draft. This team is an absolute Super Bowl contender and one you should be watching out for this season. The Houston Texans are one of my favorite teams in the league. I love watching Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins out there making magic on the football field. What is that going to mean for their record? Well, let's take a look. And they start off with a tough game at New Orleans. It's a short trip, but a tough game. 
The Saints will come away with that one. Then they come home to play host to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they will get a victory to start off one and one. But they got to go out to Los Angeles, face the Chargers, end up dropping that one. The Chargers starting to come along, one of the more complete teams in the NFL. But you stay at home. You get a win over the Carolina Panthers. Going through this tough quarter stretch of the season, to be 2-2 two and two, I think is going to be pretty good. Then you got the Atlanta Falcons. I know a lot of people are on the Falcons this year, believe that they're going to be a very good team, and they are. I just think that the Texans are going to end up getting them there. Oops. No, the, the, the computer's like, no, 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 don't pick the Falcons. You know what, computer? I'm not listening to you. It's like when you're arguing with autocorrect or something like, no, you will listen to me. You will beat the Falcons, but you know what? You go on the road. You lose to the Kansas City Chiefs. Tough back-to-back -back road games at Kansas City, at Indianapolis. I think they will lose that one, but then they come home, they play the Raiders. Ah, oh, it's a tough one. I think, though, I'm going to have them take a win over the Raiders. Then you got to go down to Duval. And my friends down there, the elite ones themselves, will take that one. So now you're looking at four and five. Tough game again. At, even coming off a of bye week, playing against the Baltimore Ravens. They're going to take another loss there. So they're four and six. They got to turn the season around, and it's going to be tough in week 12 going up against the Indianapolis Colts, the team I have to win the AFC South. But you know what? I think the Texans will win this one. And then the Texans always do something funny. They always do something funny against the New England Patriots. But you know what? It's tough to really, whoa, don't glitch on me. I think they're going to lose that one. But then you win here, you win here, you win here and you close it out with the win. Interesting to note here, the Texans start 0-6 on the road, but they get two road wins at Tennessee, at Tampa Bay to finish 9-7. It's tough, tough schedule for them. One of the toughest divisions in the NFL. 9-7 is a reasonable expectation. There are chances where they could end up, they could win this game, they could win that game in weeks nine or weeks 11. There's games that could switch the schedule, but the way I'm looking at it right now, they're going to be 9-7 and seven just outside of the playoffs. The Tennessee Titans. This is going to be a tough one because the first four games of the season are against four playoff caliber teams going up against the Browns, the Colts, the Jags, the Falcons. You got a loss, you got a loss, you got a loss, you got a loss. Now you're 0-4, but you know what? I, even though I like the Buffalo Bills, I think being at home, you get a win there. You end up getting a win now. You're going to end up losing to the Broncos, going on the road and losing there. What I do think you will do, playing host of the Chargers, the Chargers are going to be in a little bit of a weird part of their schedule right here where they'll be looking ahead, which is an opportunity to go out, sneak a win against the, the L.A. Chargers, one of the best teams in the NFL, and then you beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So now you're sitting here, week eight, three and five. You think like, okay, we could turn this around. Maybe there's some, some hope for the future. And then you go to Carolina, you're like, Okay, that you know you lose a game to Carolina. Then you gotta go. Then you gotta play host to Kansas City. All right, that's a tough one. All right, it's three and seven. You got a bye week. Perhaps you regroup. You make a strong run. You win out. You could probably get a playoff berth. But you gotta play my friends down in Duval County. There's a loss. You got to go to Indianapolis. There's a loss at the Raiders. Loss. Okay, now we're just. I don't mean this personally. If Taylor Lewan is seeing this, if Marcus Mariota is seeing, listen. Huge fans of you guys. But unfortunately, the way I see your schedule working out, 3-13, and 13, I don't want it to be this way. If I could have been unrealistic and given everybody 13 wins, I would do that. But you know what? The way the schedule works out, especially with the tough start, you got some tough games here in the middle stretch from weeks 10, 12, and 13. And then at that point, the season is just starting to unravel. So unfortunately, Tennessee Titan fans, it's not going to work out playoff-wise, but you'll get a cool draft pick, so you got that to look forward to. Now it's time to head to Duval and to see what my friends down in Duval County, see what they're up to. Let's see what these young bucks can do this season. They open up playing host to the Kansas City Chiefs, and everybody thinks the Kansas City Chiefs are just going to go up there and they're going to beat the Jags out there in Jacksonville. Oh, no, you don't. We're going to give that win to the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's right, 1-0. They're back, baby. Last year, a little bit, of, bit, a little bit of a mirage. This going back to what happened two years ago. I like the way this team looks. I like the way they're set up. Nick Foles is out there. He's going to be out there like the cleaner, being the American nightmare for a lot of teams. But all right, you had a huge win against Kansas City, then it makes sense that perhaps the following week against the Texans, 
you take a loss, but you know what? You beat the Titans, you beat the Broncos, and now you gotta go to Carolina and face this team. And I wanna be realistic. I wanna give you guys an accurate prognostication. That's what I, I listen, I love these guys, I love Jacksonville. Of course, they're going to take a loss at New Orleans. New Orleans, again, one of the best teams in the NFL. But you know what? You got Cincinnati. There's a win. Got the Jets. There's a win. Now you're looking at 5-3, and three, and now you're thinking like, okay, this could go pretty good. You got the Texans again. You dropped an L right there. But you know what? They're coming down to Duval. They want no part of you. You're going to be 6-3 and three at this point. Now, you take a bye week. You have a good time. You go out. You watch some AEW. By this point, they'll be on TNT. You'll be out there enjoying it, watching the Young Bucks. Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, all those guys, Adam Page, Full Gear, all that stuff. Sorry, though, you're going to take a loss coming out of the bye week. You know, there's a lot of things happening, but you know what? You get back on track. You beat the thumbtacks right there. You beat the box. You can't let the box beat you. And then, you know what? You got this tough game against the L.A. Chargers. L.A. Chargers, one of the most complete teams, top to bottom in the AFC. You know what, though? I got you back. You're going to get a win there. You're going to get a win. Over the Raiders, absolutely. Then, fortunately, I take that L at Atlanta, 10 and five. But you know what? With the Colts already wrapping up the AFC South and not needing a win, and you guys needing to win and get in, Nick Foles will lead you guys right there, 11 and five. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going back to the playoffs. You heard it here first last year. Let that be a bad memory. Just let that go. Just let that get out of your mind. This team is elite, and they will be in the playoffs. The New York Giants did not make the playoffs last year. So what do you do for an encore to ensure that doesn't happen again? Yeah, that's right. You trade your fit. You, you trade your best player. What were you doing sending OBJ to the Browns? You want them to go to the playoffs? Let's see what the Giants will do this season. You open up at Dallas with the loss. You're coming home. You're playing the Bills. You're like, oh, this is one we should win. Actually, you should. You're going to lose to Bruce Arians, even though he's starting off there. That's a loss for them against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But Washington Redskins, you're going to get a win right there. But that's short-lived because here come the Vikings. That's a loss. It's not a Super Bowl, so you'll lose to the Patriots there. Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury, they come to New York. You get a win, but then you go, you get a loss when you go to Detroit the following week. The Dallas Cowboys coming off a win over the Eagles in week seven. They're on their bye week. So what do you think Jason Garrett does coming off a of bye, going to New York to play? Of course, you guys are going to take that one. You guys knew that. But the Giants, the Jets, the Metropolitans, the, the, the New York battle, you know what? I'm going to go with the Jets on that one. Now you take a bye, you come back, you go to Chicago. Last year, you got the Bears. That is not going to happen this year. You take a loss. I would like to see you guys knock off the Green Bay Packers, you know what? That's not going to happen. In week 14, you got the Philadelphia Eagles. That is going to be another loss. Now you got a stretch where you can get some wins here. You get a win over the Miami Dolphins. You're going to sweep the Washington Redskins. And in week 17, when you could probably make things miserable for the Philadelphia Eagles, nah, you're not going to. You're going to get a loss. So this is another rebuilding year for the New York Giants. I think Saquon Barkley could go out there catch 100 passes, maybe rush for 1,500 yards. It's going to be great for your fantasy teams, but not so much for the fans of the New York Giants. The Philadelphia Eagles. Last year, you broke my heart. You know, it's not bad enough that you beat the Bears. You then you had to go and lose in the playoffs. If you're going to beat the Bears, at least go out and win. You know what? That's for another time. Let's talk about 2019. The Eagles schedule is here before us. You open up with the Washington Redskins with a win. Week two is where it gets a little bit saucy going down to play the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan is putting up MVP type seasons. This is going to be a tough early season contest. You know what? I got you guys winning that one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have you start 3-0, but then you got to go to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers and their new coach, Matt LaFleur. That offense with Aaron Rodgers, that's going to be a tough one. You're going to get your first loss of the season, but you know what? 3-1 through the first four games, that's fine because you're going to get wins over the Jets, over the Vikings, and of course, you got to go to Dallas. This is going to be a tough matchup for you guys. Dallas always plays well against the Eagles. I know last year that should have been a pick six in the overtime. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But you know what? You're going to get another loss there. But still, you're five and two. You're feeling good. You beat the Bills. And you know what? Revenge for the double doink is coming up. I'm sorry. You take a loss right there heading into your bye week in week 10. You're six and three. Are they going to make the playoffs? Are they not? Well, you know what? I say you come out of that bye week and you beat the Patriots, just like it's a Super Bowl all over again. 
Then you got another, look at this, look at this stretch right here. You got the Bears, the Patriots, and then the Seahawks. The Seahawks, again, is a tough matchup. They're one of the top teams in the NFC. I say you get them. You're gonna get the Dolphins. Giants, that's easy. Redskins, that's easy. Now you got the Cowboys coming in to Philadelphia. You know what, you'll get a win there. And just, you know what? Just to make sure the Giants don't feel too good about themselves as they're probably starting Daniel Jones by this point. Boom, win 13 and three record for the Philadelphia Eagles as they win the NFC East. Isn't it enough to get the number one seed of the conference? Well, you know what? We will let that shake out here in just a few moments. All right, before we get started, Washington Redskins fans, let me just tell you right there, the comment, that top comment, that's mine, at Adam Rank NFL. You can leave the nasty remarks there because you're not going to like what I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to be a tough rebuilding year for the, for the Skins. Going to get a loss to open the season against the Eagles. You're going to get a loss against the Dallas Cowboys. You're going to get a loss against the Bears. They're, they didn't really do you any favors with this schedule. These are three tough playoff caliber teams. And then, you know what, you're gonna actually take a loss to the Giants, I'm sorry. Then you got the Patriots? Look at this schedule right here. What are they doing to you? Oh, you can't even, you can't even enjoy Miami as you lose there, but guess what, you come home, you play the San Francisco 49ers and you get a win. Congratulations, you're one and six, and then you know what, you lose the following week. You lose that week, you lose there. But you got the Lions in week 12. I think you'll win that one, so you got that to look forward to. That's two wins, that's pretty good, right? Well, it's like, there's a loss there. Could you have helped us out there? No? Okay, whatever. Loss, loss, loss. Hopefully, Dwayne Haskins gets some time to develop as a quarterback because that's really what you're playing for right now. There's some talent there, and I don't think that it's going to be terrible for a long time, but Jay Gruden's got a new quarterback to work with. Hopefully, you make some strides in those areas because record-wise, it's not happening. The Dallas Cowboys made the playoffs last year, so the Jason Garrett thing would be to not make the playoffs this season, right? Well, who knows? Let's check out the schedule and see how it works out. Now, the, Gi the Giants are the opener. Gonna get a win there. Gonna get a win there. Gonna beat the Miami Dolphins, 3-0, feeling pretty good. Tough matchup at New Orleans. I still think the New Orleans Saints are one of the top teams in the NFL. You're gonna drop that one on the road, but you know what? I will give you a win at home the following week against the Green Bay Packers. Jets are a win. The Eagles, you know what? I'll give you a win. The Cowboys play the Eagles very well. I think that's a pretty good matchup for them. So now all of a sudden you're six and one. You go into the bye week, you come out of it. You're going to New York. What do you think is gonna happen? That's right, you're gonna take an L. But you're gonna come back the following week. You're gonna beat the Vikings. You're gonna beat the Lions. But then week 12, you go to New England, you're gonna lose. But you come back, you beat the Buffalo Bills, and now you are entering the toughest part of your schedule because in week 14, you have to go to Chicago. You're gonna take a loss. You got the Rams in week 15. They're coming off a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover, but you know what? I still have the Rams as a stronger team. And now you gotta go to Philadelphia. You lose that one, you're fighting for your playoff lives. Well, you know what? Guess what? You're gonna get a win over the Washington Redskins, 10 and six. Is that going to be enough to make the playoffs? Well, we'll find out in just a moment, but I will say this, the Cowboys are locked and loaded. I remember last year when they had traded for Amari Cooper, you could not find somebody who was more critical of that move than me, but this team looks pretty good. 10 and six seems about right. The Seattle Seahawks are coming off a playoff berth. And as a matter of fact, it was the first time in Pete Carroll's history as the coach of the Seahawks that they went one and out. But what do they do in 2019? Let's take a look at the schedule. You open up with the Cincinnati Bengals. You're gonna get a win there. Now the marquee game, going to Pittsburgh, winning there. I know a lot of people think that West Coast teams don't go and win in Pittsburgh. Oh wait, as a matter of fact, the LA Chargers did it last year. The Seahawks are gonna do it here as well. Now you got the New Orleans Saints, another tough game. So you got back-to-back -back Steelers Saints. You know what? I have enough confidence in you. You're gonna take that one. You're gonna beat the Cardinals. You're gonna play host to the Rams. Two close contests against the Rams last year that could have gone either way. This time, it goes in your favor. Now the Browns are gonna be flying high at this point in week six. They're gonna be feeling pretty good about themselves. You know what? They're not gonna feel as good about themselves once you come in there and get that win. You got the Baltimore Ravens. That is gonna be a win. Oh, you're feeling pretty good. Week eight though, that game against the Atlanta Falcons, I think that Atlanta can be one of the teams, one of the contenders for the Super Bowl. It's a lot to ask. So you know what, how about this? Seven and one after your first eight games of the season. I think you would feel pretty good about that. Everybody would enjoy that. You're gonna close out these last two games with a couple of wins, going to the bye week at nine and one. Now, 
is when the schedule gets a little bit tougher. Now you got to go to Philadelphia, play the Eagles. Even though you're coming off a bye week, this is going to be a tough struggle, but you're going to end up taking the L. Minnesota Vikings come across the country. You're kind of reeling though. Looking ahead to week 14, you end up dropping a game you probably shouldn't. You know what happens? You're nine and three, you're feeling good. Ah, oh, but the Rams in LA, they get you as well. Now all of a sudden, what were you, you were undefeated through the first seven games of the season. Now you're nine and four, what's happening? Pete Carroll, maybe he's chewing that gum a little bit more, but you know what? You go down to Carolina, you get the win. You got Kyler Murray there, the rookie. Get a win over him. Now you're 11 and four. Got the San Francisco 49ers disappointment last year. You know what though? Seattle always takes care of their business. 12 and four, your team is going back to the playoffs. Will they be another one and done? I don't think so. I think this is a pretty good team. I think Russell Wilson is now becoming the best quarterback in the NFL. Pete Carroll is a top five coach. And even though they're gonna be missing Doug Baldwin, I think this team finds a way to get it done. The Los Angeles Rams are coming off a loss in the Super Bowl. How will that affect them? Will there be a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover? Let's take a look at the 2019 season. You open up at Carolina. That's probably a tougher game than you would have liked, but you know what? You still find a way to get that W. Now you got the Saints. Week two, everybody remembers the controversial finish to the NFC Championship game. I think the Saints are gonna be motivated. They're gonna end up sneaking that one out. So all of a sudden, it's one and one. You're okay, there's no big deal. You gotta go to Cleveland. I'm a big believer in, in Cleveland this season, Baker Mayfield, OBJ, Jarvis Landry, so many weapons there. Now the Rams are one and two and people are starting to wonder, hey, did they lose all their mojo in the Super Bowl? Well, you know what? A win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers might answer that question. You're back to two and two, but you gotta go to Seattle in week five. So you know what? You're gonna take a loss there. Now people are starting to wonder, Sean McVay, everybody we thought he was, but you know what? You answer those questions with wins over the San Francisco 49ers. You got to go to Atlanta, but you know what? I'm confident that you will end up beating the Falcons. You'll beat the Bengals. We don't need to worry about that one. You go to you go to Pittsburgh, and I know and I know I've said this a lot, but last week I, I I think it can't be said enough. West Coast teams do not need to be scared about going to Pittsburgh. You get a win there, but unfortunately, even though you're playing host to the Bears this season, that's going to be a loss because the Bears last year kind of set the the road work on how the Patriots attacked them in the Super Bowl. They really harangued Jared Goff and made him look kind of out of sorts. They'll get him once again, but you know what? You rebound with wins over the Ravens. You'll beat the Cardinals. Now you got a tough matchup in week 14 against the Seattle Seahawks. You're playing host of them. You're gonna get a win there. You're gonna go to Dallas, another game. I mean, another game that's gonna be very tough. This one's gonna have heavy playoff implications. And even though it is on the road, I see you guys coming away with a victory there. A win over the 49ers, a win over the Cardinals. You could not ask for a better close of the season. And interesting note, the last time the Los Angeles Rams lost in a Super Bowl, that time to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team, a dynasty that was, you know, at the end of its run, the Rams started a little bit of a slide. Let's hope history doesn't repeat itself. But looking at this 12 and four record, I think the Rams are in pretty good shape. The San Francisco 49ers were everybody's hipster pick last year to make a deep run in the playoffs. How'd that work out for them? Not so well, but you know what? 2019 is a new year. You got a nice week one matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You gotta travel down there, but you know what? I'm gonna say you take a loss. Bruce Arians had a lot of success against the 49ers when he was the coach of the Arizona Cardinals. He had a lot of success against everybody, but you know what? You make it up with the win over the Cincinnati Bengals. The Steelers come to town, you're gonna to lose that one. You go into your bye week in week four, which just seems ridiculous, but you know what? It's a perfect opportunity to catch the Cleveland Browns napping. You get a win, you're two and two, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You're like, this could be our year. This could be the year that the hipster pick actually comes through, except you gotta go down to Los Angeles in week six. That's a loss, but you think, oh, we can beat Washington. Well, you know, back-to-back -back road games, Traveling across the country, I'm gonna say that's an L. You got the Carolina Panthers, you're playing host to them. Yeah, that's gonna be another L. You gotta go down to Arizona to get your first glimpse of Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. Sorry guys, that's gonna be an L, but you play host to the Seattle Seahawks in week 10. That's a loss. So now you're two and seven, playing host to the Arizona Cardinals. This is where you get back. 
to your winning ways. So now you're three and seven, perhaps. If you close out with a bunch of wins, you might sneak into the playoffs, but Green Bay Packers also have something to play for. Plus, the Baltimore Ravens going on the road to play in Baltimore. That's gonna be a loss. You gotta go on the road to New Orleans to play the Saints. That's a loss. The Atlanta Falcons, one of the top teams in the NFC. I mean, who are you taking? That's a loss. The LA Rams at home, but still, that's a Super Bowl caliber team. And then you got to go on the road in week 17 to play the Seattle Seahawks. And again, that's a loss. To me, this isn't indicative of the talent or what they're building in San Francisco. I have a lot of faith in Jimmy Garoppolo. I think there's some nice pieces defensively, but when you look at the schedule, there are a lot of tough games, including the Browns, the Steelers, the Rams. You got the Packers, you got the Saints. Unfortunately, it's gonna mean a three and 13 record for your San Francisco 49ers. I am a big believer in Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray. Think they could absolutely turn the NFL on their ear this season. What is that gonna mean for their schedule? Let's take a look. You start off with a home game against Detroit. This could be a win, but you know what? I think Matt Patricia is actually building something pretty nice there with the Detroit Lions. You're gonna take an L. You're gonna go across the country to play the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, that's gonna be an L. You're gonna play host to the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton's working on his mechanics. Yeah, you're gonna take an L. You got Seattle coming to town to get a victory from you, but you're starting off 0-4, but you know what? Hope is not all lost. You got the Cincinnati Bengals. There's a solid dub. Now you guys are feeling pretty good about yourselves, except the Falcons will get you. Falcons, one of the top teams in the NFL, especially with Matt Ryan playing at an elite level. The Giants, I mean, the Giants gotta beat somebody. It's gonna be you. The New Orleans Saints, come on, let's be serious. San Francisco at home, that's a big W for you. So now you're two and seven. And again, I talked about this with the San Francisco 49ers. You're sitting in a spot that perhaps you could get some momentum going. If you win out, perhaps you can make a run, but you know what? It's the Bruce Arians revenge game. Revenge for who? Because he retired, you didn't find, well, whatever. He's gonna end up getting you. You're gonna lose there to the San Francisco 49ers. You get your bye week in week 12, so at least you get some time off to reflect on being two and nine. Then you take an L to the Rams. You got the Pittsburgh Steelers coming into town. Pittsburgh does this all the time. They overlook teams that they feel are beneath them. Like there's some, some sort of some sort of royalty. So you know what? You'll catch them. You'll catch them napping. And you get your third win of the season, but then you close out with losses to the Browns, to the Seahawks, and to the Los Angeles Rams. So I'm a huge fan of what Kyler Murray can bring to the NFL. I'm not sure it's gonna translate to actual NFL wins and losses, but your fantasy team should certainly benefit. The New Orleans Saints have had back-to-back -back devastating playoff losses. Will that hangover carry into 2019? Let's take a look at the schedule. They open up with a tough game against the Houston Texans, and you know what? I think they're gonna get that one. Even though they might be looking ahead to the game they really wanna win, going on the road to play the Los Angeles Rams in a game that they felt that might have been kind of disputed. Perhaps there was a penalty that should or should not have been called. But anyways, you go out there and you get your revenge. You're thinking to yourselves, we're 2-0. We settled our score. We're feeling pretty good, except you got to go on the road to Seattle, back-to-back -back West Coast trips. That's okay. Don't worry about that because you handle your business against the Dallas Cowboys. Again, the Dallas Cowboys competing for a playoff spot, but I think you're comfortable getting in over them. You take a win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now you gotta go on the road to face my friends down in Duval County, Florida. You know what, I think you'll get them. I think you'll get them. I almost put the loss there, but no, you'll end up getting Jacksonville. You guys are a good team, but you gotta play the Chicago Bears on the road. Everybody remembers the middle 2000s. This rivalry was at its peak. You're gonna lose to the Bears. I'm sorry, it's just gonna happen, but you know what? You make up for it. You get a win over the Cardinals. You got a tough matchup, divisional game against the Atlanta Falcons at home. You take them on, you sweep the Buccaneers, but this is another tough part of the schedule. Losses to the Panthers and on the road to the Falcons back-to-back -back leaves you at eight and four, scrambling a little bit, need to start getting some wins together to ensure you get to the playoffs, but you got the San Francisco 49ers. You got a tough matchup against the Indianapolis Colts, a rematch of the lone Super Bowl win of the New Orleans Saints. And you know what? Even though Andrew Luck, I have a lot of faith in that team this season, you'll get a win over them. You get a win over the thumbtacks there, and you go on the road, and you clean it out with a win 
over the Carolina Panthers. There you are, 12 and four, setting yourself up for another run through the playoffs. Hopefully it won't end as poorly as it has the last couple of years, unless, you know, you're going up against the Bears, then I hope it does. The Atlanta Falcons finished seven and nine last season, the first time in Dan Quinn's tenure as head coach of the team that they finished under 500. What does that mean for 2019? Let's take a look at the schedule. You open up on the road at Minnesota. That's a tough matchup, but you know what? I've got a lot of faith in your team. Well, not too much faith because the following week, I think the Eagles come down and steal a victory from you, but you know what? It's not too bad. You play or you go on the road to play the Colts the following week. I'm sorry, that's another loss. You're one and two, but that's okay. Take on the Titans, you get a win there. Now you got the Houston Texans. You know what, another tough matchup on the road, as you see. This little stretch right here can be a little bit tough, but thankfully, here come the Arizona Cardinals. You're three and three. You're like, okay, we're gonna play host to the Rams. Here's an opportunity to make a statement. That statement is you're not as good as the Rams, but you know what? You got the Seattle Seahawks the following week. You'll get a win over them. Now you're heading into the bye week, you're four and four. You're like, okay, things could be worse. Oh wait, actually they do get worse because you lose on the road at New Orleans. Now you're gonna need a lot of help to get back into the playoffs, get back into the mix. But you know what? You start with a win over the Panthers on the road. You start with another win over the Tampa Bay Lock. Actually, your first win over the Buccaneers on the season. You get the Saints in the rematch. So now you're starting to get a little bit of a winning streak. Last year, they had two separate three-game winning streaks. Just couldn't put it all together. But this is not going to be a problem this year as they finish off with a win over the Panthers. A win at San Francisco. Oh, you're feeling pretty good. My friends down in Duval County, you know what? You'll get them. I like Jacksonville this season, but you know what? You get a win there. You get a win on the road at Tampa Bay. Hopefully, that is going to be enough to get you into the playoffs. This is a very good team, the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan has been playing at an MVP level. I know he won it in 2016, but actually he was even more impressive. Last season hasn't been turning the ball over an awful lot, throwing the ball all over the field. This is a very good Falcons team, but that NFC is going to be awfully tough. Cam Newton has been working on his throwing mechanics. Christian McCaffrey is one of the most exciting players in the NFL. What does that mean for the 2019 season? Let's take a look right now. You open up at home against the LA Rams. They're coming off a loss in the Super Bowl. Guess what? You'll be coming off a loss in week one, but you do follow it up with wins over the Buccaneers and wins over the Arizona Cardinals. But you got a tough road game going to Houston to face the Texans. Unfortunately, you're going to take a loss there and then in week five, you got my friends down in Duval County, Florida. You'll get a win over those guys, even though it kind of hurts me to say it, whatever. You get a win over the Buccaneers, you go into the bye week, you're standing there at four and two, feeling really good about yourself. Now, coming off that bye, you play the San Francisco 49ers, that's a win. You got another win against the Titans, and then you gotta go to Green Bay, a pivotal matchup. You gotta beat the Packers. You two are gonna be competing for playoff priority. Unfortunately, you're gonna take that out. And then you got the Atlanta Falcons the following week. And again, gonna take that L, but six and four, things are looking okay. Get a win over the Saints on the road. Get a win over the Washington Redskins. You're eight and four going to Atlanta. Hey, listen, you just gotta win a couple of more games down the stretch, but look at this stretch. At Atlanta, playing host to Seattle, at Indianapolis, and at home against the New Orleans Saints. You probably need at least one, probably two to get into the playoffs. Unfortunately, L, 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 L for Ron Rivera's team. And again, this is a tough schedule for the Panthers. I think they are a quality football team. A lot of tough games. I think that stretch is what ends up doing them in at the end of the season. Eight and eight for your Carolina Panthers. Bruce Arians is back in the NFL and I am here for it, but what is that gonna mean for the Buccaneers and their 2019 schedule? Well, check it out. They're opening up against the San Francisco 49ers. Bruce Arians always handled the 49ers when he was down there for Arizona, but you know what? Tough loss against the Panthers in week two, but you got the Giants in week three. You're feeling two and one. Everybody's rocking a little bit of Kangol hats down there in Ybor City, but unfortunately it's gonna be a loss to the Rams, you got the Saints on the road in week five. You got the Carolina Panthers, that's gonna be a tough loss. You got the Tennessee, you got the bye week in week seven. Then you got the Tennessee Titans. Say the Titans get you, you gotta go on the road, fly cross country to Seattle, that's always a tough trip. 
that's going to be a loss. Then you got the Arizona Cardinals in week 10, and you get a win there. But even though you play host to the New Orleans Saints in week 11, that's going to be a loss. You're on the road against the Atlanta Falcons in week 12. That's going to be a loss. My friends down in Duval County play host to you in week 13. There is a loss. The Indianapolis Colts, one of the top teams in the NFL. Of course, that is where Bruce Arians won the Coach of the Year Award in 2000, what was it, 12, 14, whatever it was. No, 2012 for the Colts, 2014 for the Cardinals. We got it, we got it, we got it. Don't anybody yell at me. A loss there, but a win against the Lions the following week in week 15 before you close it out with a couple of losses. Now, what you want to see out of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, certainly you want to go to the playoffs, certainly you want to win games. But I think the most important thing for the Buccaneers this season is find out what you have with Jameis Winston. If you find out that Jameis Winston is your quarterback of the future, that's a win. If you find out that it's time to move on and address that position in the draft, that is a win. So it's going to be a tough go record-wise for Bruce Arians, but I think good things are coming for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Green Bay Packers have a brand new head coach, Matt LaFleur, who absolutely crushed it in Tennessee last year. At least for a couple of weeks. What does that mean for 2019? Let's take a look at the schedule. You open up on the road in Chicago. I know you guys remember what happened last week. Last week, last year in week one is what I meant to say. This time, things are going to be a little bit different. Khalil Mack is not going to get tired. He's going to be there for a full training camp. Roquan Smith is... Okay, you know what? We'll talk about the Bears a little bit later. Let me tell you something. Packers are going to get some quality wins here. They're going to beat the Vikings. They're going to beat the Broncos. they got a tough matchup here against the Philadelphia Eagles. This is going to be one of the marquee contests of week four. I'm going to say they get that one. I say, you know, and I'm not still mad at the, the Eagles for the double doink or anything like that, but three and one, first quarter of the season, I think that's pretty good. You got the Dallas Cowboys on the road in week five. Ah, that's that's going to be a loss for me. You got a tough win over the Eagles, a little bit of a letdown the following week, but you won't let down against the Detroit Lions. You got a tough matchup against the Raiders, tougher than a lot of people think it'll be. I'm a big proponent of the Raiders this season. So you got five and so you got a record of five and two. You're on the road for your next two games at Kansas City, at Los Angeles. You want to split those, but unfortunately, the Chiefs are going to get you. The Chargers are going to get you. But then you come back the following week. You get a win over the Carolina Panthers. You take your bye. You're six and four. Everybody relax. R-E-L-A-X. Did I spell that right? I think I did. All right. Win over the over the 49ers. A win over the Giants. Nice schedule, guys. Win over the Redskins. Like, why don't you schedule in a college team? Oh, wait. You got the Bears. And um, yeah, there's no way I could. Yeah, okay. That's fine. He's right. I'm not going to push it. I don't want to touch that. But you'll probably end up getting a win over the Bears. As a matter of fact, with the Vikings and the Lions, you're going to close out with what? One, two, three, four, seven wins. Because you know what? They gave you such a beneficial schedule. But anyways, I don't think that's going to be enough to take the division. But it should get the Green Bay Packers back into the playoffs for the first time in three seasons. Kirk Cousins had a really nice season last year in his debut for the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know why everybody was ripping it. I thought he was pretty good. But now the Vikings are going to try to run the ball a little bit more. How will that impact the 2019 season. Well, let's take a look at the schedule. You open up at home against the Atlanta Falcons. That's a tough one right out of the gate. I think the Falcons are going to be one of the surprise. I'm not really a surprise team, but one of the best teams in the NFC. That's going to be a hard fought contest. You're going to take a loss on that one. You got the Green Bay Packers on the road as you did last year, and you managed to tie. I'm not going to predict a tie, but I will say the Packers find a way to win this time in Lambeau Field over you guys. 0-2. Not feeling great, but you got the Oakland Raiders at home. Get a win over there. Now you play, or now you go on the road to face the Chicago Bears. And the Bears kind of own. Remember when the Bears knocked you out of the playoffs? Because I do. I do. You're going to take a loss right there. You're one and three, but you know what? You're going to go to place the New York Giants in week five. That is going to be an opportunity to get a win. Now you're two and three. You're feeling a little bit better about yourselves, unfortunately. Got to play those Philadelphia Eagles. You are going to take a loss in week six. You got a road trip to the Lions. That is going to be another loss. Now week eight, it is a revenge game for Kirk Cousins. And of course, he's going to get a victory. You move to three and five. And you're like, okay, maybe some things can happen. You got to have some good fortune 
go into your favor, but unfortunately that week nine contest is on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs. That is gonna be a loss. You're on the road once again to play the Dallas Cowboys. That is gonna be another loss, but you will get a win over the Denver Broncos. You go into your bye week in week 12, week 13. You got the Seattle Seahawks, and you know what? Coming off that bye week, I think you will get a win. And now you're hoping, you know what? If you can just win those last four games, perhaps you can sneak into the playoffs. But you know what? This is a tough game against the Detroit Lions. I think they get you in it by this point. The season's it's unraveled. The wheels are off the bus. You go to Los Angeles, come out here, get the loss. Get the loss against the Packers. You know, we could have used that, but whatever. The Bears get you in week 17 once again. Although, you know what? At least the good news is you've already been eliminated from the playoffs at this point. And now, a lot of questions about Mike Zimmer as the team tries to kind of hold on to that running pass. Is it going to be able to compete with teams like the Packers and the Bears? I think both those rosters are much stronger at this point, and I think that they're going to end up leading the division, and the, and the Vikings are going to take a little bit of a step back. Two years ago, the Lions fired Jim Caldwell as head coach because they were tired of finishing 9-7 and seven every year. So they hired Matt Patricia and went 6-10. and 10. Yeah, those nine wins don't seem so bad now. Let's see what happens in 2019. They open up on the road at Arizona, but you know what? I'm kind of a believer here. I'll give you guys a dub. You're 1-0. All right, way to go. Oh, wait, you know what? You're going to play host to the L.A. Chargers. That's going to be a loss. You got the Philadelphia Eagles. That's going to be a loss. You got the Kansas City Chiefs. That's going to be a loss. And you go into your bye week 1-3, and three and you're like, hey, thanks, schedule makers, for this little bit of a run. Hey, at least when you get out of your bye week, you get the Green Bay Packers. That is going to be a loss, but you know what? I think you will have some success this season against the Minnesota Vikings. And you're going to put together back-to-back -to -back wins. You're three and four. You're like, you know what? If we just handle our business on the road against the Raiders, we could get five. We could get the 500. Maybe things could happen. Maybe they won't. Lost there. Lost to the Bears. Like, let's be serious. Cowboys will get you. Washington. You guys can get Washington out now. You're not going to get Washington this time. You're not gonna get the Bears either, but you know what? I think you have a little bit of a mastery over the Vikings this year. So you win that one, you play host to Bruce Arians, you lose. Here come the Broncos. No, here come the, you've mailed it in at this point. Unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna be another struggle for the Detroit Lions. They've done a nice job of acquiring some pieces. Matt Patricia, I'm kind of a believer in him, but you know what? It just doesn't seem like they have what it takes, especially in this division. The Packers and the Bears are much too tough. This opening schedule that includes the Chargers, the Eagles, the Chiefs, and the Packers is going to eventually be your downfall. It is time for the moment you have all been waiting for, the schedule of the Chicago Bears. I was on Good Morning Football, and I said I would be shocked Shocked if the Bears did not win the Super Bowl. You know what? As a matter of fact, let's go crazy. Look at all these dub, dub, w, 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 w. Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's get the party started. It's Club Dub, everybody. 16 and 0. You read it right there. 16. All right, well, this is fair enough. Now, if you know anything about the Bears, they've got four winnable games to start the season, so it would make sense they go across the pond, play the Oakland Raiders right before the bye week and take a loss. I could see that happening, but they would come back, beat the Saints. The Chargers are a frisky team, especially when nobody expects them to do well, and I know a lot of people expecting them to go to Chicago to not play well. This seems like a game the Chargers could, of course, come up and win. Packers on the road week 15. Listen, I got to be a realistic fan here. I'm a fan, but I'm also realistic. I could see that happening, but I do believe that they get wins over the Saints. They get this win over the Rams. They get the win right here in week one. There is no way after what happened last season, there is no way that they're going to lose this game. I guarantee it. And you know what? You look at that 13 and three record. That is the number one seed in the NFC club dub, everybody. Can 
Can we have everybody? Come on, everybody. Club Dub. Club Dub. Come Dub. Dance party. Get over here. How does nobody dance? <laughs>